to the we go to the issue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's two hands and wa qawluhu ma mana'aka an tasjud lima khalaqtu bi yadayh uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is obviously talking to Iblis what what is preventing you to prostrating to that which I have created with my own hands wa qalat al yahud yadu Allah maghlula غلت أيديهم ولعنوا بما قالوا بل يداه مبسوطة ينفق كيف يشاء. Allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about his two hands here. Allah is talking to Iblis. What is preventing you from prostrating to that which I created with my own hands? We already know the whole story of Iblis, and we all know that Allah subhanahu wa taala created Adam with his hands. That's an honor for Bani Adam. That Bani Adam, maybe not us, but our father was made with the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is an amazing thing. So the way in which we look, the way we've been proportioned, was created with the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our father Adam. What a great blessing that is. Um, so, naam, we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands. And that the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are going to be min sifati al They are going to be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's characteristics that never leave him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands. They never ever go. They, Allah always has hands, okay? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings a, another ayah. And he says, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودَ The Jews said, يَدُ اللَّهِ مَغْلُولَ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands is closed. Okay? That his that their hands, that Allah's hands are closed. Now look at this, Yani. Wallahi is ajeeb. Wallahi is ajeeb jiddan. It's, it's crazy. They said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands are closed. And they also said, Inna Allah faqeerun wa nahnu aghniya. Another ayah. Allah is poor and we are rich. Why did they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hand is closed? Meaning that Allah doesn't, Allah is poor. They're saying that Allah is poor. Do you know why they said this? They said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was rich, <laughs> I can't even believe it. When I was reading the sharh, if Allah was rich, then every man would be rich. The fact that, <laughs> that some people are poor and some people are rich means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have enough to give around. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Tekhayyal hadha. If Allah had everything... He would give every everybody would be rich. So subhanAllah, they're trying to say something as if Allah doesn't have money to give. Trying to compare Allah to his creation. Some of us maybe we're faqir, we're going for hard times. We can't eat what we normally eat. We have to buy the 50p baked beans from Tesco, you know, some cheese, some you have to make do, yeah. And you know, times are rough. And then when it's good times, you eat the nice food. Nah, akhi, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not at all. But this is, again, when you look at this ayah, this was ajib. Even in the ayah, there's qiyas with Allah and his creation. Even in the ayah, they're making an analogy to Allah of his creation. They're looking at what Allah did and they're not saying that Allah is al-hakim. Allah has, is the most wise. Allah is al-alim. Allah is the most knowing. Everything that Allah does is for a purpose. No, they didn't think like that. If another man is poor... And another man is rich Then a person who believes in Allah And has iman says that Allah is the most gracious And the most merciful Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Tested this man with poverty So that in the dunya he gets a higher He gets a higher place in the jannah Or maybe Allah tested this man with poverty Because Allah knows that this man Cannot handle money Cannot handle riches And maybe if he had money He will go to the hellfire So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Made him poor So Allah saved him from the hellfire He tested him with poverty And because of that poverty He even gets a higher place in Jannah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Gives the other man Riches Perhaps that man Would not be able to deal with poverty As the Prophet said Kada al-faqru an yakuna kufran Poverty, it is as if poverty is kufr, disbelief Because when you go to a poor people You can make them, a person in abject poverty You can make him commit kufr through his, uh, through his abject poverty You can make a person who's in abject poverty leave their religion Which is what they do in certain parts of the world So rather than look at it like that They said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have enough to give to everybody 
one person is rich, one person is poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have enough, there's not enough to go around. Subhanallah. <laughs> Wallahi, what did Allah say in the Quran? Lu'inu bima qalu. They were cursed because of what they said. That is a curse. Lu'inu bima qalu. They are cursed because of that. A la'an in Arabic language, like we said, la'an, to be cursed by Allah. Like I said, somebody needs to come and bring the Oxford definition of the word cursed. Because I don't know what cursed means. And we all know what cursed means. What's the definition of cursed? Because la'an in Arabic means al-ib'adu wa tard. It means for you to be far away and for you to be cast away. The way I understand curse is like for somebody to be given like measles or something or like a, or, or like a kind of illness and they're cursed because of that, that illness. But in Arabic, al-la'an is for you to be far away from the rahmah of Allah, for you to be an outcast, for you to be uh, 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 out, يعني, do you know what I mean? But cursed, يعني, Allahu alam. Um, na'am. You can just Google cursed definition. The word will come up, Wallahu alam. So when you're ready, bring that up. So Allah says, Lu'inu bima qalu. This is a reason for them to be cast away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says, Bal yadahu mabsootatan. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his two hands are open. Okay? Yunfiqu kayfa yasha. Allah gives to who he wills, kayfa yasha, how he wills. Any definition here? That's good, that's actually good, yeah, that's good. And that's, that's what we, you know when someone says, you know, like, may the curse be upon you or something. It's like a spell that's going to leave them cursed forever, you know, like a person gains, like, boils on his skin and lives in a cave or something like that. You know, I made a, I made a uh, analogy a few lessons ago, but nobody understood, you know. I said something like, um, yeah, and he, obviously we're not here to thingy, but everyone's younger, people used to watch films, like that thing Gollum in Lord of the Rings. You know, he's in the cave and he's been cast away for like thousands of years looking for the ring. You know, he's just become this cursed thing. That's like the kind of understanding of cursed that we understand in the English language. And it means that someone Arabic cast away, thrown away, having no rahmah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands are open. His hands are meaning that he's not in a state of poverty. Yunfiqu uh, kayfa yasha and gives to whoever he wills. So what we need to understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed that he has two hands. Allah has affirmed that he has two hands. Other places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms it has more than two hands. But this uh, affirmation is the affirma- is this jam this plural is the jam of ta'zim. Of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala magnifying himself It doesn't mean that Allah has several hands of, No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran In many places he has two hands The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said Okay, he said uh, uh, يعني, He said al, um, in a famous hadith He said uh, Yadullahi ala al-jama'ah Or yadullahi ma'a al-jama'ah Allah's hand is with their congregation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hand is with the congregation. Now look at what even Ibn Uthaymin, he said this point. They said, Yadullahi maghlula. One of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands is closed. Is, is closed, is tight. Is, is, uh, uh, the, يعني, they're trying to accuse Allah of, of having taqteer, of being, of having shuh and bukhul and being uh, stingy. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yurudu alayhim, when he replies to them, he doesn't just only say that, he doesn't uh, uh, nullify what they say. He, they said one hand. Allah told us both of his hands are open and he gives them to whoever he wills. They said one hand, Allah said both of them are, are, are open. Yunfiqu uh, kayfa yasha. He gives to whoever he wills. So what we understand from that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us to ponder over himself. He wants us to think and gain closeness to him, but not to ponder about him, who is Allah. What does he look like? Yom al-Qiyamah, if you have Iman, you'll see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But from this, he says, yunfiqu kayfa yasha. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yunfiq, the sifa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yunfiq, he gives, he gives and gives and gives. Okay, so what we should understand is that this should cause us to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should seek bounty and wealth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part of seeking 
Allah's bounty and wealth is al-fi'lu bil-asbab, is doing those particular things that are going to bring about wealth. So if a person wants to make money, for example, you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone and make money. يعني, you know, it's not good for a person to try and um, they say insanity is to do the same things over and over again and accept the same results. You have to get over your, you have to, you have to be agile. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. By you trying to seek employment, by you trying to seek new skills, by you trying to learn something new to help yourself to feed your family, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enrich you and will help you. He'll help you pass that interview. He'll help you uh, uh, open that business. He'll help you save that money. But if you do nothing and make dua, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask you to bless me with a house, with this and that, and you, and you sit down every day and you're not trying to change, that is not how the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works at all.